Hello and welcome. This is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting for February the 28th of 2023. Today we have Mark Waite and Kevin Martins and of course myself. Um, we still have a few open action items. I think we won't get rid of them shortly. <laughs> and it's of course about Docker images for uh, the Blue Ocean container which are deprecated. So we haven't announced yet uh, the deprecation of the image or have we mark i don't think we have no no we have not it's it's been discussed here i think the deprecation of this image would be best done by adding the administrative monitor that we mentioned that's mentioned in a later action item or in a later topic yep. and then we announce the deprecation blog it and people see it in their jenkins weekly Oh, hey, this thing is deprecated. Yeah, because we still see from time to time people coming out of the blue. What? Wait, um, deprecated? Really? <laughs> yes. Right, right. And, and we need we need a way we need a way to at least point them to, hey, your user interface was trying to tell you this. You suppressed it because they may, but at least we attempted to tell you that this thing is deprecated. Okay, and speaking of things that we want to get rid of, uh, we used to love um, the Blue Ocean and things that we don't love that much, like CentOS 7. Uh, we'd like to get rid of the CentOS 7 Jenkins controller Docker image. As you may already know, we've thought that in the previous meetings. Uh, officially, uh, CentOS 7 is still in maintenance update from 2020 until uh, June from uh, next year, so 2024. And we want to deprecate the CentOS images uh, for Jenkins. And we definitely want to get rid of that. I know, Mark, um, it's one of your motto, get rid of CentOS 7 for yeah. various reasons. One of the reasons I have is that it's really difficult to keep it up to date with a recent version of Git, for example. I know how much you love and use Git. And that's a pity that for CentOS 7, it's really, really hard to get a recent version unless you compile it by yourself, anyhow. So uh, in previous meetings, we talked about maybe needing a JEP about uh, using an administra administrative, difficult to say, monitor. So if I'm not mistaken, that the kind of thing you see when you have a deprecated plugin, when you have a new version of Jenkins and all of that appears in your uh, Jenkins controller. Am I right, Mark? Yeah, and I think we may actually be able to do this with just one JEP and a pull request to Jenkins core. Now that I, I look at this a little more, thank, thank you for writing, thank you for the, the notes. I think the Jenkins enhancement proposal that we need is to change our usual behavior. Our usual behavior would be CentOS 7 end of life is June of 2024 when the CentOS project ends its life. We want to end, end support of CentOS 7 sooner, say September of 2023. Um, October, some some arbitrary date we choose. That is a, a change for the Jenkins project. And so the JEP is to propose an acceleration of the end of life for, for CentOS 7. The administrative monitor, I think we can just do it as a pull request. Proposing, now the pull request will certainly get lots of feedback, lots of comments from people about, hey, either this is not general purpose enough, or it's too general purpose. Uh, what are you thinking about doing it this way? Why not do it this other way? And and those those conversations will be valuable and useful and important, and will give us a better solution. Um, because it's this is sort of a, an administrative monitor for deprecation of a thing that deprecation of a thing there could be multiple deprecated things and we need a way to represent multiple deprecated things portably cleanly extensively etc and so um that's that it'll actually be a fun thing to add to jenkins core and and certainly there will be lots of conversation i expect lots of conversation and some really good insights from the high skills people around the organization not me uh, who know how to do Jenkins core development really well, they'll suggest we should do this instead of that, and we'll get a much better solution as a result. 
because we know we need to deprecate blue ocean Docker container, right? The blue ocean container image. We know we, we, we should tell people that Ubuntu 18 is end of life as of April of 2023. And Likewise, our Alpine container images, I think in May of 2023, the oldest of those container images will be deprecated. 3.14, if I remember right, is one that's deprecated. So, so there are all sorts of places where this technique may help users and where we need the technique as a way to make things very visible that, hey, you're running on. So as a, as a very specific example, I saw a posting today on community.jenkins.io from a user who said, I have a Jenkins that's running on Ubuntu 16.04. And my answer to that is, that is absolutely crazy because the Jenkins project does not support Ubuntu 16.04. And we don't support it because the vendor does not support it, right? Canonical yeah. does not support 16.04. 18.04 is the oldest they support, and that will end support in May of 2023, I believe, or April of 2023. So, so we, we could do them a, a service by saying, you are running on a platform we don't support. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, you're and, right. And they, they, may, they may be unsettled by that. They may find that very aggravating. What you're telling me, but, but it's the truth, right? The Jenkins project does not test or support or in any way do any work on Ubuntu 16.04, and, and we won't. Yes, and as you say, that could lead to um, uh, good conversations between uh, people in the community. And right. I guess people from the security uh, will <laughs> chime in and say, uh, what, you're going, to, you're going to deprecate Alpine, Linux, whatever? What about getting totally rid of all the Alpine images right. and so on. Why not? Um, but yes, I hope that people will discuss and find a consensus afterwards. Great. That's interesting. And you're right, that would be very helpful for the end users, seeing that they are running their Jenkins on an unsupported system by Jenkins and by the vendor itself. That's super cool. I would love that. Uh, right. And by the way, thanks a lot for the link you gave us a few meetings ago. Uh, maybe it was in Docs Office or whatever. Uh, regarding, you know, the deprecation, the end of life, the open source website. And yeah, today I saw um, a tweet from a French guy saying, oh, I found a nice website to manage my end of life and say, ah, I know of a better website, which is open source. <laughs> because the website he used to use um, didn't list Jenkins, for example. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yours is better, whatever. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Kevin, Mark, any other information or question, whatever, regarding that subject? No, we just, I think for right now, we're, we're in the talk phase rather than the implementation yeah. phase. And I suspect we'll, we'll be stuck in the talk phase for several more meetings just because I don't have capacity to do it. And I don't know of anybody else who has capacity to do it. But the concept feels like the right concept and let's let's keep working on it yeah to me at least uh looks pretty cool so uh without further ado let's uh go to the next subject which is the latest updates on the agent image it's nothing disruptive uh this time just a few things about git once again because i think there was a cvu recently um about um git so the latest Images now have the right Git version until the next CVE, I mean, <laughs> I guess, mm -hmm. I suppose. And the inbound agent uh, got an update uh, of the parent image, two updates, in fact, uh, the three and then the four. That's all the thing. And for the update CLI, we don't care because it's something that happens behind the curtains and that doesn't change anything when you are using the inbound agent. So. Uh, something totally optional, but we still have a few minutes. Um, so I discovered uh, by accident yesterday <laughs> that uh, the Android build tools are now uh, natively compatible with Arch64. And guess what? It has been a long time. I <laughs> never know. I was stuck for whatever reason with um, the version 30 dot something and so it never worked for arch 64 unless you know for example lots of people have now um arm m1 with an r64 controller and building android application with jenkins or these machines 
um, you had to use the raw data, which um, transform the X XT64 instructions into R64. And this is not perfect. You just have to switch to Android build tools 31.0.0 and bam, it just works. That's super cool for me because I build Android apps with Jenkins on a regular basis, but on an x86 machine. But just the night, I tried something on a small R64 machine and it worked. It was amazing. Uh, previously, you had to do some hacks with some binaries taken from a Chromebook, for example, uh, to get it to work. So now as a developer, I'm super happy that it does work. And uh, yeah, another subject about Jenkins. I know every meeting I talk about RISC V, which is a very promising CPU architecture. And I was pretty proud of myself because I had made some tests with some very edgy um, open JDK um, builds and so on. I thought I was really um, a pioneer, you know? And <laughs> unfortunately I had tried uh, chat GPT uh, today for the very first time. I didn't want to experiment with that, but I asked chat GPT, do you know about Jenkins? Of course, do you know about RIS5? Of course, do you know about RIS5 and Jenkins? And then he gave me some pointers of blog post and Reddit thread and GitHub issue. And I thought end of 2022 was the beginning of Jenkins on Risk Five, but <laughs> I was wrong, so wrong. Some people experimented in 2020. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a pioneer anymore. So I'm happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, would any of you have any other things to add uh, before we close the meeting? I do not. Thanks very much for your time. Nothing oh, welcome. Me, Thanks. Thanks a lot for coming. Uh, the video should be up on YouTube in 24 to 48 hours, and we'll see each other uh, 15 days from now. Have a good uh, rest of the day. Bye-bye.